In the last video, we derived an expression for the probability of finding a, a system in a state F having transition from a state I after some time TF of applying a harmonic perturbation of this form. We broke it down into two separate cases. And we started looking first at the case of absorption, which is when the final state energy is higher than the initial state energy by a factor h bar omega. Uh, we arrived at the following expression, which can depend on two experimentally tunable parameters, Tf, the duration of the perturbation that is applied for, and omega, the angular frequency of the perturbation. In this video, we're going to look at uh, the behavior of this probability as a function of time specifically as a function of TF, which uh, technically is a constant. You apply perturbation for a certain time, but we can play around with how long we apply the perturbation for. So we, uh, we can tune that time uh, as we see fit. So if we were to plot the probability of being in state F at some time TF, as a function of time, uh, you can see that this will vary sinusoidally because this is the only term that has a TF. It will have some maximum amplitude, let's say somewhere there. And it will look something like this. The, uh, the amplitude of this oscillation is given by uh, these numbers over here. So this is four delta VFI squared over H bar uh, omega FI minus omega squared. That's what goes in here. Uh, the period of this oscillation is two pi omega fi minus omega, which makes this four pi omega fi minus omega. And this gives a very important insight into what we should do if we're trying to uh, maximize the chances of inducing a transition, of inducing uh, an absorption event. Uh, we see that it varies sinusoidally, which means that there's a point in time at which we have, uh, uh, at which we've maximized the probability of absorption, essentially, at these points. All right, so the first conclusion we can make for this. If we want to maximize this probability IF, we should only apply the transition for a time pi. Uh, we'll call this TF star for a, a time pi over omega FI minus omega because that will bring us over here, at which point this probability will be maximized. And it will be given, it will have this magnitude. Uh, there's no need for the absolute values, but I'll put the absolute values. All right, uh, notice that this also gives us a very pragmatic way of validating our perturbative expansion. Uh, this probability must be much, much smaller than one for our first order perturbation results to be accurate.
And this is often the case in practice. Uh, this probability is really actually very small. The second observation we can make from this is if we apply the perturbation for a time two pi over omega fi minus omega or any integer multiple of that, we are ensuring that our system will remain in, in, the, in the initial state because the probability of transitioning is zero at those points. It should be TF. So if, if we apply the perturbation for TF equal to two pi n over omega FI minus omega, to find the particle or the system that we're looking at. In the initial state. Okay, and this is because in that case, when TF is equal to two pi n, omega fi minus omega is identically zero. Okay, and this is used in practice. If we wanna induce a transition by absorption, we know uh, how long to apply the perturbation for to optimize the chances of that happening. Alternatively, if we wanna ensure that there is no transition due to the perturbation, we can apply um, we can shine light on our system, for example, for any one of these durations in time. So this is already a very useful uh, result from time-dependent perturbation theory for uh, harmonically oscillating perturbations. In the next video, we'll again explore this probability, but now uh, at a fixed TF, so fixing the time we apply the perturbation for, but now seeing what happens if we're able to tune the angular frequency of our perturbation omega and explore what happens to the probability of transition uh, in, in that case.